that's a very important question. Of course, the brain is mostly fat. That's why they call people fat heads, because your brain is 60 to 70 percent fat. Your nervous system is mostly fat, too. Fat is somewhat of a structural nutrient, and what that means is that it becomes part of the structure. Like, not all nutrients are structural. For example, B vitamins are not structural nutrients. You take your B vitamins in, they're like workers at the factory. They do the work, and then you urinate them out, or they punch out. So, but fats don't. Fats go in and become part of the brain, like a brick in a wall. So the kind of fats you eat dramatically affect the structure of the brain. And they've done numerous studies. There's robust literature on this with um, ADD, autism, uh, you know, learning disabilities, and the fat content of these diets and kids with these problems compared to other children. And they're different. Study out of Harvard using these as high, high EPA fish yes. oil. But then recently, a lot of people have said, oh, no, you need more DHA. Oh, the fish wars. <laughs> There's two main fats in fish. There's EPA and DHA, but they do different things. So the Harvard studies were looking at mood disorders. So for mood disorders, EPA is more important. Um, that would be depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder. For cognition and for very young children, DHA is more important because 25% of the brain is DHA. So if you're really getting nitpicking and threading hairs type thing, uh, you have to look at the condition in the individual child to know how to balance it. And honestly, it comes to fisticuffs with nutritionists and doctors about this sometimes. I mean, there's just so much, oh, no, it should be more this, more that. You need both of them, but you need them for different things. My son started speaking after sublingual B12 and folic acid. And can you tell me that supplements used for significant speech disorders? The things I concentrate on in the book are actually fats because, again, the brain is mostly fat, and there are three different kinds of fats that are incorporated into the brain. And my favorite, which you might like because it has a methylation component, is choline. I use a specific form called phosphatidylcholine, and that's a $40 word. But phosphatidylcholine is, um, choline is a methyl donor, so that would fit into the pathways you've had. The phosphatidylcholine is the building block of a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is the main neurotransmitter that has to do with motor planning. So for kids who don't, the reason it helps people who don't speak in sentences is because at that point you have the language in pieces, but you can't string it together and motor plan it. So a child in this situation, you might say, what did you do at school today, Josh? And he would say, no, or I don't know, or nothing. But he might know what he did in school, but he can't figure out what you really want. So if you said, well, did you have art or music? Ah, then, oh, more music. Because now you're motor planning his thinking form and helping him think about, helping him use his language in a more complex way. Well, choline helps you do that at a chemical level. Have you seen um, young children go from nonverbal to verbal? I have, and I think if I hadn't, I wouldn't have the patience to keep doing it year after year, but I've seen lots of kids not only go from nonverbal to verbal, but going from low verbal, single words, to more complex sentences. Because what ki keeps kids on the autism spectrum is not so much being nonverbal. A lot of kids with autism speak. It's not being conversational. Like they have language, but they can't use it back and forth or in any abstract ways. Everything is rote. And uh, choline and fish oil and vitamin E, which I talk about in the book, all these things have been found to help some of these kids have the chemical basis for learning. So when they have the experience of conversation, they can actually put the different parts of their brain together and generate the conversation. How do you know when your child needs a specialized doctor or nutritionist? You know that your, doc, your child needs a specialist when you think they need a specialist. I, mean, I really do think if you're asking yourself that question, do I need somebody, they probably need somebody. Medicine has gotten so fragmented. It's almost like, the, honestly, it's the old thing, the hand doesn't know what the foot's doing. And it's, it's shocking how little regular pediatricians know about development, for example. And it's not because they're not smart, it's just because there's so much to learn in school that, that, that it's narrowed down. And so if you think you need a specialist, for goodness gracious, you know, say, get one. Tell us about picky eating and when you should worry about picky eating. I think it's the same answer. You, you should worry when you think that you're worried. And, and in other words, if you think your child's a picky eater, it's very rare that somebody says, I think my, I don't think in the almost 30 years I've been doing this, I've ever seen somebody who told me that they thought their child was a picky eater, and I looked at what they were eating, I thought, no. Um, the opposite has happened, that they told me their child was a great eater, and I looked at what they were eating, and I thought, no. <laughs> but, but almost never does it go the other way. And there is research, not much, because it's hard to do these kind of studies, that suggests that picky eating does affect 
intellectual development, we certainly have these studies in rats. When they put rats on the equivalent of the junk food, fast food diet, and then they try to teach them to run through mazes and do the intellectual equivalent of the SAT for rats, they can't do it. And at the end of those studies, you never do this with kids, they cut off their heads and they look at their brains because that's what they do with animals. And their, their neurons are all tangled up from bad food. So there's some way that some of these kids who aren't learning well, their neurons are tangled up. And you're basically a bucket of chemicals. And so the medicine that you're really taking is what you're eating. Mm -hmm.